of it that I really really like and then what goes crazier or what makes it even better is now the process of scheduling so we've created our email um, mm -hmm. we actually did I marked it as done and I'm not sending it to anyone because you have live people in here um, <laughs> but you know in the case that you were going to send it to someone you would have the option to first select the actual group that you want to send it to mm -hmm. and then before sending it it allows you to review it so it wouldn't actually be sent to anyone yet right so you can always send yourself a copy you can always preview it and you can always preview it prior to actually sending it but you mm -hmm. have that option to doing that preview as well you have mm -hmm. the option now to make sure that it goes to the people that you want it to go to and then you can schedule it again mm -hmm. i'm not going to do any of that because this is a live account but basically that was that's what takes you through that process are you comfortable mm -hmm. there yes yes i am okay so now let's talk about the integrations and then i'm going to hop into the forms and sites before i go into automation so the integrations are pretty wild in terms of what you can do because Zapier is one of the biggest integrative tools that you can use. And so if you're mm -hmm. if if you're familiar fit that if you're familiar with Zapier, you know that you're able to actually um, go into the process of adding excuse me adding all your contacts through Zap. So if you were to have someone subscribe based on your website, they can automatically come into this process where they can get added to a group or a subscription group, they call it. And then you're mm -hmm. able to send them an automated email from that. Mm. Based on your website, you also have those connectivities of WooCommerce, which is more so for people who are selling items. So you mm. have that with Shopify and things like that. You have WordPress, which is one that I use. You have Facebook audiences, a mailer check. And then you have Stripe, which is the payment system that people use as well. Right. Mm. So that's the integrations. And then with the forms, forms are going to be the space where you're able to create pop-ups, which is normally popped up on your website to kind of give people that, hey, subscribe to me, right? Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. want to learn more about me, subscribe. So that's mm -hmm. like a call to action that can be used on your website or on other, on other places. To use mm -hmm. this, this is simply just a create option where you're able to select which type of one you want to do. And then in here, you can choose if you want to embed it, meaning that you'll be able to create a style around it, but also you'll be able to kind of embed it in a location. So this is a, if you're embedding it in your website, on a page, yeah. or what the case is. I like pop-ups because it's pretty fun and easy to use. But let's say that you use the pop-ups, you're able to say which group that you want to subscribe, like you want to pull the subscribers into, or you're able mm -hmm. to create a new group, right? In this case, I'm just going to use the welcome. Mm-hmm. And then you're able to choose in this section a template that's very, like, you know, generic, and you can see all of them. And I'll just use for this segment just the um, actual uh, previews. But yeah. you're able to kind of see how the pop-up works. You're able to see exactly how you can create these backgrounds. You can add the verbiage. You can add, if you want them to add their name or their email, you can add that mm -hmm. images here. You can put your links here. And then this button can be customizable to say either sign up or get more information or whatever you want it to say, they can do it here. Mm -hmm. So that's the biggest thing about um, f the forms, okay? Yes. Sites, however, you're familiar with landing pages, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So landing pages, you can create a landing page here. Wow. Again, you're able to select if you want to do landing page or website. In this sense, because I know that you know about landing pages, I'm going to jump over to websites. Mm -hmm. And with websites, what the great thing about this is, is that you can use this entire system to create a new website and you don't have to use another place. Like this literally can create a full blown multi-page website and you're able to wow. do this within this tool. So you can obviously start from scratch, but I'm going to preview one so you can see how this person builds out their website. You can see you could do sections, you can do backgrounds, you can hyperlink out of the website, you can do see. So it's, it's basically just showing you all the things. You can embed videos because you can actually use HTML code, and then it'll show the branding based on the free account or the account status that you're in, but you're able to kind of like do that overview as well, okay? Wow. I'm going to move mm -hmm. this over, but yeah, that is like the... Biggest thing over there as well. 
Now, the subscribers, I want to talk a bit about what they what they are, and I'm not going to actually show anyone because mm -hmm. I don't want this to be in a video, but mm -hmm. with the subscribers, you have the all subscriber list. You have the segments list. Segments are basically based on behavior. So the biggest thing about segments that you want to learn and know about is that mm -hmm. if you have an email that has five different links and you want to know if someone picks this link over this link, then you want to segment them. So what will happen is that if they picked um, link A, then they will be lovers of link A. That could be a group that you have in there. If they pick link B, then they'll be lovers of link B, which will be a group that you have separately, which then you can create automations and extend that out to say, okay, this is exactly all that I want to give to these lovers of group B versus lovers of group A. Mm, That's what segmenting yes. is. So you can create those segments, and then once you create them, um, I'm going to say group A. Mm -hmm. Right? Once you create them, then you're able to add the people that you have in here in that segment for them to be mm -hmm. known to be that segment. So I'm going to actually delete this so that you can have full range of um, customization. Mm -hmm. Then you have groups. So groups would be where you're able to see the entire list of segmented groups, right? So it's gonna be, it's, it's different than segment, but similar to it. So groups, mm -hmm. you're able to put a boatload of people in the boatload of people. They can also have their individual segments, but overall they're in one house, okay? Mm. So there are houses, but people are in individual rooms, pretty much like mm. that. So with that being said, you have the ability to kind of like create as many groups as you need and you can mm -hmm. create them based on your forms, your sites, or different automations that you have to kind of like mm -hmm. keep that going. With fields, you're able to create custom fields. There are default fields that come along the path here, but you're also able to say, okay, well, I need to be able to have um, someone tell me more about themselves. So you're able to kind of create custom fields and you would do so by hitting this create field button and then you can name the field whatever you want. The options that you have is either a text field, number field, or date field. Mm -hmm. So those fields are going to be used for your forms, your sites, and then it can also be populated inside of your emails. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the, the way that it will be populated like is based on these tags. Mm -hmm. So, but is that useful for when I do an email? I make a It is. So the fields itself will be useful for, for example, you have the name field. So you'll be using mm -hmm. the name field because you know majority of these clients' names. So they'll be able to say, okay, hey, Lisa, it's nice to meet you. Or it's nice to see you again. Or welcome, little pie. So it's kind of like directly addressing the little pie by their name or by the, mm -hmm. their feel that you want to address them by. So it's not going to be it. subjected to just, um, you know, an, a generic email. It'll give them more personality and say, Welcome, Lisa from mm. State, Illinois, City, mm -hmm. you know, so I'll give them that kind of, because that information you have. Um, mm -hmm. And then you can also segment them based on that. So you can have, like, people who put tag fields of Atlanta, you can have them in a separate segment. And then you can send out automations based on the fact that they are all in the, the Atlanta City. And then mm -hmm. you'll be able to send them a, a, a different type of, so the, the flow continuously goes. Okay. For stats, stats is going to be where you may or may not come in a lot. The reason why is because I don't know if you're a data or numbers person. So if you see your stats, you're basically seeing the number of um, subscribers, the open rate, the click rate, um, the unsubscribe rate. It can be intimidating, mm -hmm. right? So over a period of time, the data will just kind of subject, subject itself into the space. Um, and what I love about this is based on the plan that you're in, on, it gives you more information. So with this, it'll actually give you as much information as you need. So you'll get the top domain. So if you, you'll see here that a lot of people are in um, Gmail, right? You'll see that people mm -hmm. actually use Hotmail. Who still uses Hotmail? <laughs> you have Outlook, Yahoo, and, and another Gmail, but it's spelled incorrectly. <laughs> yeah. So there's apparently a Gmail that's spelled incorrectly in here that we probably want to correct. Um, and then you have the cleanup in, um, in Active. 
it cleanup and active. So for the cleanup and active, what I like about this is that it shows you people who have never opened any emails. Clearly, you haven't sent any yet in this um, document, but you can have people who never sent emails. You can have people who never opened them. The they were never responding to anything. They never, you know, they don't. They you've sent them seven emails and no one has opened anything. Whatever that is. It literally can show you that based on the criteria, and then you have the ability to unsubscribe them, or um, you have the un, uh, the ability to segment them to say that you want to se send them a special email based on their activity um, or inactivity rather. So that's just how that works. And then last but not least, history. So history will tell you when you've imported um, different kind of like documentation, like different text fields or whatever subscriptions you've imported. I'll kind of just give you that out later. Very basic, very simple. Good. Woo! How do you feel? Any questions? No, I love it. It's just very, you're very, like, concise but detailed and clear. I like it. <laughs> so, um, in this automation section, this is where the baby gets real, real fun, Okay. So okay, okay. automations, it has its own kind of like process. In mm -hmm. automations, you're able to see a few things. You're able to see um, the, okay, so I'll actually go into this welcome sequence. And now, nope, I'm going to mm -hmm. create a new one. So with the automation, you can create an automation based on whatever you want, right? But in this cool. automation, you're able to, tr 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 da -da -da. you're able to create triggers mm -hmm. based on what you want. So mm -hmm. for me, I like to create triggers based on when someone joins a group. But let's say that you mm -hmm. don't want to join a group. You have the option to do when someone completes a form, when they subscribe to a link, when they update a field, when the um, anniversary of a date that's in a field is um, met. So meaning that when mm -hmm. it's their birthday and you have a birthday field and it's their birthday, you send them an, a, a, a happy birthday sequence, right? Mm -hmm. Or when it's an exact date. So if it's Christmas and you want to send them a Christmas email, you can send them that on a specific date. This mm -hmm. system is one of the systems that I've seen do this on an exact date. There are many others that may have done it, but I just have not seen it before. And so basically, I love using Milanope for this. So it allows you to like exact date matches, and then the group would be, it would be a custom field that you would have to create for that date. And then it'll say mm -hmm. exact date matches that date. Okay. So in this case, I'm going to say that they join the, um, the trigger is going to mean that they join the workflow, right? So I'm going to oh, hit group and then I'm going to hit save. So now that that's started, there are four things that you can do. One mm -hmm. of them being obviously creating an email because it's an email marketing sequence. Mm -hmm. You have a delay option, which literally will say, hey, when do you want to send this out? Is there a waiting period? You can wait for a specific date of time. And that'll be when that that is like kind of like figured out. You can mm -hmm. also do the option of condition. So if they opened an email or if it's five days later or if it's 10 days later, you can do that because you have the same four options here. With mm. action, you're able to define an action. So when something happens, like when this email happens or when this meets this condition, then I needed to do something else. I needed to move to another step or I need them to do this. So if they clicked a link inside of an email, right, and you want that to be the defining factor, you can segment them into another sequence in one workflow. Mm. So it gets heavy. Yeah. <laughs> it gets heavy. But what I like to use the automations for is if I'm going to segment them, I like to make sure that I'm doing it and it's clear and concise that it doesn't confuse me or confuse the sequence or overlap in any way, right? So one of the things that I like to do is I like to say, okay, let's create a first email, right? Mm -hmm. In this email, we can use, you know, you can, because inside of the workflow itself, you'll do the same thing. So you can create the email name. You can, okay, you can also do the subject, it'll say the where, it'll say the who and the from, and then you can design the email. So clearly you can design this email all again from scratch, or I can just choose the template that's already created. Mm -hmm. When I look over the template, I'm going to say, okay, I think this is dope. You can either mm -hmm. preview and test it in here, or you can just say, yeah, mm -hmm. I think this is fine. Let's hit it. So what will happen here is that it will just send, it will just show you the preview here. And then from mm -hmm. the preview, you can now create those additional steps. 
I see, I see. Okay. 